What's going on, everybody? Leo Cannell here with the Seven Figures Club podcast. In today's episode, we're going to talk about some very important you know, values and principles that actually lead to massive success in life. We're going to talk about why well-defined values and principles are the drivers of entrepreneurial success and life fulfillment, how my previous company grew really fast and then imploded due to lack of values and principles that were well-established, the culture was not built, and how my current business has grown much more profitably with a much more solid foundation due to well-established values and principles at the very beginning. So let's dive in. There are over 32 million businesses in the U.S. and over 90% of them will never break seven figures in annual sales. So how do we as entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs break into that seven figures club? This podcast will relentlessly share the secrets, strategies, and tactics I've used to create three multi-seven figures businesses and bring in even more successful entrepreneurs than me to share their inspirational stories and tactics to success. You can create your dream business in life right now. So buckle up and let's go. All right. You guys are having an awesome day, a great week, and finishing 2020 really strong. Just like in the fourth quarter of any uh, football or sports game, you want to finish very strong in that fourth quarter. And I find a lot of people during this time of year really begin to phase out. Employees, teams start to uh, kind of check out. They're thinking about uh, you know the, the Thanksgiving. They're thinking about uh, the Christmas time, the time off, family, all important things. But there is no reason or excuse not to finish 2020 really, really strong and aggressively because that's the difference between those who are going to hit 2021 and have a lot of success and momentum and those who are going to really struggle at the beginning of 2021 because they took the foot off of the accelerator and really finished 2020 weekly. So that, my friends, a very important seven figures lesson for us all to keep focused on. Finish 2020 strong. Finish your day strong. On a Friday, you finish Friday strong. I think about last Friday, we were here you know, really pushing hard till 5, 6 p.m., finishing the week out really strong. And that, my friends, leads to success. Now, in today's episode, we've got some important things to talk about. One thing I've learned a lot from speaking with people and entrepreneurs who are much more successful than me, including a, a podcast that will be coming out in the, the next few days after this one. I uh, interviewed a gentleman who is one of the founding members of a direct selling company, uh, per, a, a business that has literally gone from zero distributors to 10 million distributors around the world, globally in multiple countries, and he's the leader of all of them. And just a phenomenal guy who I learned a lot from in the interview. But the thing that I kept on hearing over and over from him was how values and principles, when instilled in his team members and especially his leaders, led them to make the right decisions. And he didn't need to micromanage every decision because those values and principles guided the decision. Every decision was, well, as we look at the issue we're assessing here, we're going to go with A or, or B, but which one aligns more with our values and principles? And that makes the decisions easy because those values and principles dictate who you are as a company, how you serve your clients, and how you work with your strategic partners. And that, my friends, is what it's all about. And so... Today, I want to talk to you a little bit more about uh, how these values and principles are drivers of entrepreneurial success. There is a book that I read uh, last year. It's by Ray Dalio. It's called Principles. And in it, Ray Dalio, who is probably the most successful hedge fund manager and trader uh, in our country in the history of uh, the world. I mean, he's just phenomenal. So many years, his company continues to kill it and do well. Uh, Bridgewater and Associates is his company. He's worth, I don't know, $25 billion, something like that. But he's built his company and his life around these principles, principles of radical transparency, principles of you know what is most important to them as a company and, and as people and in life. And he navigates 
big decisions and everything that the company and that he does personally with his family life based on those principles that he's established. And again, some of the most uh, uh, important ones that, uh, that uh, strike me as really impactful is his ability to really look at issues honestly and objectively and then find the truth in those without being without letting biases come in and unobjective prejudices that really don't lead to the truth in making those decisions and in corporate america of course there's a lot of different you know factors and influences that impact how a decision is made as a company and because he comes at it from such a contrarian point of view and such an objective point of view where he doesn't care what anybody out there says or thinks but wants to get to the root of the truth that's made him and his company Bridgewater and Associates extremely extremely successful now a lot of people a lot of entrepreneurs you know maybe you're out there looking to build something maybe you're already in the process of doing it there's this idea that well we've got to get bigger and you know get outside of just surviving because at the beginning of your business sometimes you're just trying to survive right you're trying to make enough money to cover payroll to cover the rent payment to stay in business to take care of your marketing budget and that's kind of dictates a lot of your decisions but in another book that i'm reading called tribal leadership they talk about getting to a stage four stage five business or entrepreneur and to get to that point values and principles are established at the beginning of the business not one two three years in because by then it's too late I mean it's never too late you can always establish these but if you do it at the beginning you'll build a much stronger foundation and as typify as typical in my career as an entrepreneur I've got uh, stories where I did it all wrong and how I'm finally doing it right and that's uh, going to be hopefully a seven-figure secret or or something is being part of this uh, community in the seven figures club podcast that you can avoid my mistakes and do things right from the get-go so in my previous uh, company that I built uh, we grew very fast we started in my kitchen and uh, grew to uh, I don't know how big our office was 10,000 12,000 square feet it was a big big office space uh, that we moved into which ended up being a massive mistake but a lot of what we did was based off of what was called stage three in this tribal leadership where decisions were made even uh, with my partners and us as owners it was made from a stage three point of view of how can how can you know we be great how can individually we be great and, and do things and make decisions based that benefit us instead of a stage four where it benefits the entire community and everybody's you know the success of the company and individually is all aligned together and as a community we're winning and losing together and because you know as I brought in different uh, partners who did have some strengths and helped us grow from zero to millions of dollars within just 18 months we didn't have established values and principles and due to that lack of established values and principles decisions were made that were not the right decisions uh, you know, compensation structures were constantly changing, and there wasn't this confidence that uh, our, our team and our employees had in us as owners because things were constantly changing and they didn't know what they could count on. And so that was had to have been, a, it was extremely frustrating for me to see because I knew we needed these values and principles. And because I had partners who didn't see eye to eye with what I knew was going to be very important to our long-term success, we grew really fast and then essentially imploded from within. And as we imploded, some of our top employees began to leave. Our strategic partners who were vital to our business began to ebb and flow and and not uh, stick with us. And even one of our bigger strategic partners who ended up uh, going out of business in a massive $100 million plus organization, but didn't really share our values and principles. Maybe we shouldn't have been working with them from the get-go because they didn't share our values and principles. They didn't give a shit about the success and long-term you know, opportunity of helping their customer and client. The wrong values and principles were established in that business with that strategic partner we were working with and they were not established in our business and so 
I could see it uh, as uh, things would change as everything was put in place to limit the the, uh, the income and the compensation and just everything was not aligned. We, we didn't even have things structured to know if we were winning or losing with our uh, weekly and monthly profit and loss schedules. Just things were such a mess and so disorganized and it all came back to values and principles that were not established. They weren't. We didn't know what, what was our values and principles. How did that guide our decision making? And at the forefront of those uh, principles and values, we didn't do what we said we would do as an organization. And it made me want to it made me want to vomit because we would tell a strategic partner one thing and do another. We would tell an employee one thing and then do another. And so after I just couldn't take it anymore and, and left the company that I had started, that I had lost control of, that we didn't have established values and principles, the first thing I did when you know I started you know my current company, Seven Figures Funding, was I was going to establish clear values and principles that we were going to live by, and anybody who didn't live by them was going to be you know pushed out of this business. We weren't going to live and do our business without these values and principles. And some of the key ones that we established from day one were number one, we're gonna do what we freaking say we're gonna do. If we say we're gonna do something, we're gonna do it. And it's happened over and over again when I'm doing payroll and I think to something I said that I would do to an employee or with a strategic partner and I think, why in the world did I do that? <laughs> that was not the smartest thing in the world. But because I said it, you're damn straight I'm going to do it, right? I'm going to follow through and do exactly what I said I would do. I'm going to pay you even though it's turned out to not be as profitable or as good a deal. I don't know why I made a bad deal like that. That's a mistake on my part. But you know what? I said I would do it. And you're damn straight I'm going to do it. And I follow through and I do it. And that principle and value alone sets us apart from 90% of the other businesses. Because 90% of businesses, there's a reason why a certain percentage of businesses never break a million dollars. I mean, it's 90% of businesses never break a million dollars, and it's because they don't have values and principles that their organiza organization and that they as an entrepreneur or business owner stand for, and that comes through very, very quickly. And so when you do what you say you're going to do, well, now people know they can count on you. Now businesses know they can count on you. Everybody looks at you differently because you follow through. Your word is your bond. You're going to move heaven and earth to follow through. And if for some reason you can't, you're going to communicate very clearly why you can't and do everything possible to make sure you do follow through in the future in order to do exactly what you said you would do. You're going to follow through on your commitments all the way. You don't need a written ironclad fisted agreement because your word is exactly what you're going to do and that that value and principle sets you apart substantially another one is unreasonable optimism and a lot of people don't understand uh, what this means and what it means is a client starts whining and complaining an employee starts whining and complaining and we certainly acknowledge problems but 95% of our time is focused on solutions, another value and principle on our wall. We are solutions focused. We're unreasonably optimistic. We're not going to make love to the problem, but rather to the solution. Sure, we'll acknowledge it, but there's not going to be complaining. There's not going to be criticizing. There's going to be focusing on solutions. We're going to be real and acknowledge problems and mistakes, especially individual mistakes, but we're going to move forward to the solutions. We're going to move forward to unreasonably optimistically finding those solutions. And a lot of that makes a massive difference because 50, 60 percent of the world is very pessimistic. They are extremely negative. They do expect the worst and you can't uh, really fault them too much for it because they might be bombarded on social media, the media in general, TV news. I mean the majority, 90 percent plus of it is extremely negative. It's very polarizing and it's certainly not solutions focused. It's mostly making love to the problems which is another podcast episode you should listen to. And so values and principles like what I'm talking about, doing what you say you're going to do, being unreasonably optimistic in the face of adversity, being solutions focused and oriented and focusing 100% on those solutions is what's going to make a massive difference. And 
as you start to live and make decisions in your business, in your organization, and even teach your clients and your employees and your strategic partners that these values and principles are what we live by, they'll start to you know, put them to work in their own business, in their own life, and you'll start to create a culture and a team-oriented atmosphere where we all win together. And when you do that, magical things happen. And the top thing that happens in your organization is now you've got this magical foundation. And what will happen over time as you grow is you'll bring in different employees and people that you really think and hope fit that culture and those values and principles. And when they don't, you'll inevitably have to ask them to go because they don't work in your culture. And the the old adage that uh, one bad apple will ruin a whole box full of apples, a whole plethora of it's very true. You have to cut, cut the cancers out. You have to get rid of them. As I think back to my previous organization, we had cancers in our business that didn't share even the values that we had never even talked about, but at least enough to know that they needed to go. And there was a lack of leadership with my partners to be able to make those decisions. And it made me sick. It made me ill. And that's that's why we started to implode in my previous business. And my, in my current one, we've got this great established foundation. There are well-established values and principles. My employees know, my team knows that my word is my bond and I will absolutely follow through with everything I say I will do. And that's all there is to it. And so these are the whatever your values and principles are, you must establish them, you must write them down, and you must talk about them all the time with your team. As I'm thinking about it, I probably need to talk to my team a little bit more uh, about what our values and principles are. And if they have good ideas about what those should be and want to add some, awesome, let's add them there with uh, our executive partner team of strategic partners, business coaches that we provide funding for their clients around the country, they go through our training modules. And the first thing that we are, module number one is the values that we live by. You know, doing what we say we're gonna do, responding to adversity with unreasonable optimism, focusing on solutions, and then we're relentless. We're going to find a solution and an answer and do it in a relentless pursuit and people are going to know that we're not going to stop. The client who comes to us and talks about funding, we're going to relentlessly you know, pursue and find a solution for you till you either move forward or you you know, very uh, forcefully say, no, not at this time, great. We just want a yes or a no. We're going to be relentless, and we're going to find solutions. We're not going to stop until we do. And one of our last uh, values and principles is controlling what we can control, right? So many people, especially, you know, you you pay attention to politics and the recent uh, political elections and people get all involved about it. And, you know, you can do what you want uh, to support what you believe in and you absolutely should do that. But at the end of the day, there's only you don't have a lot of control over that. So you need to control what you can control. What I can control is what I do to help my children succeed, support my wife. What I can control is how I teach and influence my team and and employees and how we're going to win together and create amazing income opportunities for them and solutions for our clients and strategic partners and create uh, an atmosphere where we all can achieve our potential. And those are things that I can control. I can control what my values and principles are going to be and I can write them and slap them on, you know, awesome uh, posters and pictures and put them on the wall in our office and everyone's going to know really clear you know, what we stand for. And when you do that, when you have those well-established values and principles, success will follow. Something that you've probably heard before is, you know, the top uh, one or two percent of the wealth and and, uh, people that uh, hold on to that wealth in the world, in this country, you could take it all away from them and within a few years, they would have it again. And a lot of that reason, a lot of the reason for that is because of the values and principles that they guide their decision making on, they lead to success. And so you can take people from situation to situation and they will continue to achieve massive results because of the values and the principles that they, you know, make decisions and and live their life by and, and build organizations with foundations 
based off of these values and principles. So if so my invitation to you today is to take massive action and meditate every day this week for a half hour until you know what your values and principles are. And maybe you're just uh, an awesome organization of one. You're a solopreneur. You're just trying to get something started. Well, guess what? Write down what those values and principles are. What matters most? What is non-negotiable? No matter you know, if you can make a quick buck here and there, you're not going to do it because you have values and principles established and every decision you make is aligned within those values and principles. And if you make a decision outside of them, quickly pivot correct and get inside those values and principles. And if you do that, success inevitably will follow. Profitability inevitably will come. Cultures will be built within your organization people who are strategic partners and clients will refer business to you because you stand for something. So that, my friends, is your homework today. Take time, create values and principles that matter, that will set you apart from the mediocre competition. And if you do that, I promise you'll be in the top 10% of your industry and build a business that truly makes a difference. Are you looking for more seven-figure secrets, content, or even how you can launch your own recession-proof business? Then check out sevenfigures.com. That's the digit seven, F-I-G-U-R-E-S.com, where we share more videos, stories, strategies, funding solutions, entrepreneurial education, and even the secret business type that's recession-proof. Thank you for listening, and if you're finding value in our podcast, please give us a five-star and invite others to join the club.